Hi everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel Electro Study. This is lecture series 9 Introduction to IoT dealing with actuator characteristics. Please do like, share, subscribe, and comment. Come, let's go into the video. In this video, we are going to see about the different actuator characteristics, what the uh, typical actuator produce. So there are some, see how we have seen in sensors. We have seen in sensor types and each of the sensors will have its own characteristics and based on those characteristics, it is used for different application. Same wise, in this video, you will be seeing different actuator characteristics and based on those characteristics, it will be sorted to different applications. So first actuator characteristics is weight. So, depending upon the physical weight of the actuators, the scope of the applications will be limited, whether it is lightweight or heavyweight, based on that, for the particular application, the actuators will be used. If suppose, if it is a heavier actuators, then it is actually preferred in the industrial application. So, when you are using heavy actuators, there is no need of mobility. It is going to sit at one place and keep on operating the motion of the required application. And if suppose we are going to use lightweight actuators, then lightweight actuators is finding its own application in vehicles, drones, and uh, home automations, all, uh, all kind of uh, things, it will be the lightweight actuators will be used. And this heavy heavyweight actuators will have its selective usage in mobile system. So, for example, you can tell that uh, the actuator, uh, depending upon the weight, it will be used in either in engine motors or landing uh, gears in aircrafts. Next characteristic is power rating. So, obviously, only when there is a power, an actuator can run and cause a action to be done in an application. So, Based on this power rating, it decides the nature of the application. So, with what nature of application an actuator can be associated to. So, the power rating is nothing but it will be defining you the minimum and maximum operating power of an actuator. That is, the actuator, whenever it operates, it should be within the limit. If suppose if it is going to exceed the operating power and automatically there will be a damage that is caused inside the actuator. So, minimum operating power will be set using this power rating. So, this, it is indicated as power to weight ratio. So, with this power rating, there will be a term called power to weight ratio, which is formed to select the actuators for the particular application. So, if suppose smaller servo motors, it is used in hobby projects, that is very small projects. So, then the maximum rating will be given as for voltage, it will be 5 voltage DC and 500 milliampere. So, it will be suitable for driving a battery ba based power sources. So, only small, small kind of uh, projects can be done using this servo motors. So, if suppose if they are exceeding the limit as I already told, if they are exceeding the minimum or maximum operating power, then obviously the performance of the actuator will be reduced and there will be a burnout caused in the motor. So, in contrast, like if you are using servo motors for larger application, then the minimum and maximum value, that is the maximum value set will be 460 voltage AC, 2.5 ampere. So, this will be the power required for driving the larger application. Next characteristic will be torque to weight ratio. So, this torque to weight ratio of the actuator is it will actually give at what speed at what uh, speed at uh, with what weight the actuator will be running so if suppose the weight is on the higher side then the torque will be on the lower side so for a given power operating power if the weight is on the higher side torque will be on the lower side so simply in a, a simple way you can say that the torque is inversely proportional to the weight okay next characteristic is stiffness and compliance so stiffness 
that is nothing but the resistance of a material so when you uh, elasticity when you keep on uh, keeping elasticity go on uh, increasing the end you it can be deformed to its original position when it is once it is left out so a rubber band if you take you will keep on increasing it will go on uh, uh, the elasticity will be keep on increasing and suddenly if you leave it it will deform to its original uh, shape right same wise so stiffness you can directly relate to it the modulus of elasticity so this stiffness uh, can be considered more accurate um, than the compliant systems as they give the faster responses because elasticity once left it will be deformed to its original position in a faster response so if you take a hydraulic system uh, it can be considered as very stiff and non compliant whereas pneumatic system whatever we have seen it is considered as compliant so here in stiffness and compliance stiffness is related to modulus of elasticity and compliance is the resistance of material against some deformation got it so this is how this is what the actuator characteristics is about stay tuned for more information thank you